In this video, we are going to learn about how can you manage groups in Microsoft 365. So after an organization creates the user accounts for its Microsoft 365 tenant, it can then create groups for collaboration between users both inside and outside the company. So before we go and see how you can create a Microsoft 365 group, we need to understand what are the different types of groups available within Microsoft 365. The first one I'm going to talk about is Microsoft 365 group. So this is a recommended group type. It is similar to a distribution group in that it has its own mailbox and its members receive email messages that are sent to the group. But it is different from distribution group because it allows teams to collaborate by providing them a shared workspace for email conversation, files and calendar events. When to use Microsoft 365 group? If you want to provide distribution list capabilities and other collaboration features, the best option for teamwork is when you use Microsoft 365 group. And how do you create it? You go to Microsoft 365 Admin Center and you create it. So I will show you that later. Now let's talk about distribution group. Distribution groups can only be used for sending email. An email sent to a distribution group is sent to all members of the group. So when to use it? When you want to distribute messages using the group only, then you use the distribution group. The third type is mail enabled security group. So what is it? It can be used for sending email. However, you can also assign group permissions, for example, to exchange public folders or OneDrive. So when to use it? when you want to use the group for both permissions and mail distribution. The fourth type is security group. Security group can be used to grant access permissions to resources such as OneDrive. So when can you use it? When you only require a group to grant permissions. That's when you use security group. And the last one is dynamic distribution group, which is only available for exchange because these groups use recipient filters and conditions that you define to dynamically determine membership. So these groups do not have a predefined member list. So when do you use it? When you want to have a flexible distribution list that changes membership automatically, that's when you use this. Now let's go and learn about how you can create these groups. Before that, I want you to consider all of these best practices. When you create a group, whatever group it could be, keep your group naming convention simple but clear so it is easier for administration later words. Then create policies and procedure for ongoing group memberships or maintenance. Add users to security groups and then add those security group to the default group rather than adding individual users to the default groups and maintain a consistent and well-defined account provisioning process. So these are all the checklists as an enterprise administrator need to follow when thinking about groups in your mind. So let's go and create our first group. I'm on my Microsoft 365 Admin Center. This time on your home page, you click on Teams and Groups and click on Active Teams and Groups. This is where you would be able to find all the available groups which is already there in your tenant. If you don't have any, you can simply click on add a group, which lets you create your specified group. We talked about these different groups. We talked about what is Microsoft 365 group, distribution group, mail enabled security and security group. You simply select the type of group you want, give a name and description is important in the real world so people know what it is about. Then you assign owners. So the owner is the one who is going to be responsible or managing this group. So you select a user who got admin rights to be the admin for this account. You can add one more administrator as a, as a fail back mechanism. Then you add members. So you can create the group without adding members as well. And then you can add them later on. But if you want to add a member, simply click on membership and you can select add a member click next provide a name for your group email 
So I'm going to call it as test MS 100. And for role assignment, if you want to add a role assignment, you can do that here or click next and create a group. That's how you create a group within Microsoft 365. So I'm going to cancel it here. If you notice right on top of this page, you can navigate between different type of groups within your tenant as well. So for security groups, uh, there is an option to nest your groups. So you can use PowerShell to create nesting within your security group. To delete a group, simply you have to select the group and click on delete team that deletes the group as well. Similarly, you can create and manage these groups in Exchange Online and SharePoint Online as well. Exchange Online has three different group types, which is distribution group, security group, and dynamic distribution group. We haven't talked about dynamic distribution group. This is a type of a distribution group where the list of recipients is recalculated every time a message is sent based on filters and conditions the organization defines. And talking about SharePoint groups, Several built-in groups are automatically created when a site collection is created in SharePoint Online. And these groups are referred to as default SharePoint Online groups. So before we close off this lesson, let's have a quick look at some of the frequently asked questions about security groups to help clarify these subjects. So one of the key questions most of the people ask is, how is a security group in Microsoft 365? different from security groups you create in SharePoint. So security groups created in Microsoft 365 can be used with SharePoint, Exchange, MDM, Windows and more. A security group you create in SharePoint is only recognized by the SharePoint site collection. The second question is, do I have to use security groups for my organization to be secure? No. Security groups are just another way to manage security for your organization and you can always grant user permissions and access to sites individually. But with security groups, you can easily manage larger groups of users. And the third and the final question is, can I send email to a security group? Yes, of course you can. But if you want to use groups for email and collaboration, it's recommended that you create a Microsoft 365 group instead. So that's the conclusion of this lesson. In the next lesson, we are going to learn about how to add a custom domain in Microsoft 365. I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.